Cata OS introducing a new operating system by Google made in Rust. Today we'll be talking about what Cata OS is, what purpose it serves, and why I believe there's something odd going on including speculative data collection with this new operating system. So to start things out on a brand new project repo page called Project Sparrow, we see that Sparrow is a project to build a low power secure embedded system for ambient ML or machine learning applications. The target platform leverages RISC-V and OpenTitan architectures. The Sparrow software includes a homegrown operating system named Cata OS that runs on top of SCL4 and is almost written entirely in Rust, which is kind of great to hear another new development in Rust, but not all great things are made in Rust. I'll elaborate on this later. So in order to start out, an announcement was made by Google's open source team announcing Cata OS and the Project Sparrow. So let's see what that announcement looked like because it gives us an in-depth view of what this project entails. So reading here, as we find ourselves increasingly surrounded by smart devices that collect and process information for their environment, it's more important now than ever that we have a simple solution to build verifiably secure systems for embedded hardware. If the devices around us can't be mathematically proven to keep data secure, we'll come back to this line in a moment, then the personally identifiable data that they collect, such as images of people and recordings of their voices could be accessible to malicious software. Another thing I want to get back to. Unfortunately, system security is often treated as a software feature that can be added to existing systems or solved with an extra piece of ASICs hardware. This generally is not good enough. Our team in the Google research has set out to solve the problem by building a provably secure platform that's optimized for embedded devices that run ML or machine learning applications. This is an ongoing project with plenty left to do, but we're excited to share some early details and invite others to collaborate on the platform so we can build an intelligent ambient systems that can have built-in security by default. So I'll tell you what I find odd about this last paragraph in a moment, but on the surface level, the operating system seems intriguing, at least for embedded devices. To explain things a little better, let me go to the drawing board and talk about all the layers here. But before we do, smash that like button for me if you're enjoying the video so far. Really to kind of explain here what Cata OS is, I'm gonna draw something out here. Just a few layers that kind of exist so that we understand how everything is interacting so basically what we have at the top level here, I'll call it Cata OS. This is the new open source project from Google that will provide an operating system, which is called Secure, although that's sort of vague. We'll get back to that. Then here we have the Cell 4. This is a microkernel that's already been developed. It's based on C and C++ and offers a really tiny kernel that can exist to talk to various different types of hardware. For example, like your camera, audio devices, peripherals like keyboards, etc., that type of stuff, including RAM, CPU, etc. So basically Cat OS is going to be built on top of this cell for microkernel and will act as the operating system for these embedded devices, which you can just think of IoT devices that run specific machine learning algorithms. So what's very interesting to me is the software that will be ran at this level will be this ML software. So what is this ML software going to do? And why is Google so interested in open sourcing this project called Cata OS and Sparrow and why I choose to build it on Rust? So let's go back to that blog post. That's an introduction to Cata OS. I want to mention this right here where it says Cata OS is also implemented in almost entirely in Rust, which provides a strong starting for software security since it eliminates entire classes of bugs, such as the one-off errors or buffer overflows where if you're not careful with memory management, you can create vulnerabilities where people can actually hijack that memory and get into your system or execute malicious code at the very least. So that's what they're saying about Rust being able to get rid of these because it manages that memory on its own and doesn't actually open you up to those types of vulnerabilities. So that I understand. I'm not necessarily interested in that one. What I am more interested in is specifically this example that they gave us of images of people and recordings of their voices could be accessible to malicious software. So we all know that Google is a huge company known for its search engine and for data collection that it sells as services to its advertisers who pay a top dollar to get targeted audiences. Well, wouldn't it be nice if Google could get some help building an open source project that could help them collect even more data in some of their private endeavors 
at the expense of the open source community. Of course, this is all speculative, but maybe it's not so far-fetched because it does seem a little self-serving to create an open source project that's highly focused on security for the specific use of machine learning and what they mentioned potential data collection, because we already know that they collect data. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Do you think it's far-fetched? Or do you think it's a possibility that this is a self-serving open source project? Also another one that says mathematically proven to keep data secure. This seems a little weird as well. I'd like to see the math that they're talking about or at least the statistics behind this claim. I didn't find anything so I didn't find anything obvious that linked me to another page or a source. So if someone has found that source or data, please link it in the comment section below. I'd like to see that as well. I don't necessarily understand what's been mathematically proven here. It's just a statement and nothing has actually been proven on why this system would keep data more secure than over another system or operating system. Anyways, bold claims seemingly made by Google. I'll definitely post a link in the description below to both the post and the open source project. That way you can follow along as Google is developing stuff. But let's talk a little bit more about those layers that I drew out earlier. So cell four is a high performance operating system microkernel. So specifically the microkernel. Basically it's unique because it focuses on performance and not getting rid of that performance at the expense of being able to run a very lean kernel and is known as a member of the L4 family of microkernels, which claims to be the world's most advanced and most highly assured operating system kernel. So what is the L4 microkernel family? L4 is a family of second generation microkernels used to implement a variety of types of operating systems, though most for Unix like portable operating systems, interfaces, POSIX interfaces, or compliant types. It is written on C and C++, so the entirety of Cat OS can't be completely rust because it does have this microkernel built in that it's leveraging specifically for the risk v and open titan architectures anyways let me know what you think about the project sparrow and the kata operating system being developed by google in the comment section below catch me in a great community on discord and i'll catch you in another video thanks for watching